All right, KISS Army, welcome to the KISS FAQ Podcast. Thank you for giving us your time today. Nothing is into your head. I hope we don't do any damage. We hope that you enjoy. Enjoy. enjoy, enjoy. Whoa! Uh, Welcome to episode 366 of the KISS FAQ Podcast. I'm your host, Julia Gill. Um, Daniel's working on exposure issues, so we thank you for joining us late at night. Thank you. Um, yep. St. Louis Kiss Lonnie. What's up? And the voice of reason, Ken. Yeah, I might expose you in another way, but... You know. Please don't. Wow! Damn, Gina! Let's yeah. start the show. Okay. Damn. So, uh, dur- during this show, you will have an opportunity to win one of the new Ace, one of the new Ace Frehley uh, posters, which of course is for the upcoming Ace Frehley Alice Cooper tour that should be kicking off imminently. There is of course the new merch coming out, which is the triple CD pack via E1, Origins Volume 1, Volume 2, and Spaceman, all housed in a nice uh, case, which you can get, uh, you can pre-order up on Amazon. So today's topic is something that Daniel came up with and I think I thought we'd done something similar to this before a different kind of truth evaluation of kisses mm-hmm. demos and whatnot but you know what after five years if we do repeat ourselves it's usually with a different cast of characters so Daniel your idea for this topic was my idea was to uh, finally get to, to know which is the best kiss song that wasn't on an official album so we're going to rank, uh, we've all given J- Julian our top 10 lists with Kiss songs that they didn't end up on, a, on an album. So I guess there will be some demos and maybe some songs that ended up on some box set and, and so on. Yeah, and that really is how it's been approached because everyone kind of came at it from different directions. So Rockology stuff is in there, some Ace Frehley early 90s stuff that, you know, was omitted from the Psycho Circus sessions or rejected or maybe not even presented as the case may be. Um, Demos from various album sessions. You know, we're all over the place in terms of our picks, which is really cool. And I think before we get started into this ranking, just to explain how I've done the Julian math, by the way, I failed math mm-hmm. miserably. Julian um, math. That's always Juli- interesting. Yeah. <laughs> Julian math. Um, Magic pencil. Between the four of us, we actually came up with, uh, I think the, the total was, what was it? Uh, I'm sorry, I was wrong before. Um, 25 different songs between the four of us. Um, so, so that is our list. The way I've narrowed down the list is obviously two of them are unanimous. The rest are not. So that's, 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 I, I, I find that absolutely fascinating. So then we rank them all in terms of our preference of which is our favoritest of those. And each one gets a number and it just helps us organize these into a ranking. Let me tell you about some of the ones that don't make the cut. These are the failures. These are the rejects of the rejects. Wow. <laughs> so I want to rule the world did not no. make I can't believe it. I actually moaned when that happened. Yeah. I actually <sighs> little piece almost, of me almost made my list. A little piece of my heart died inside. You can. So you me. go ahead. <laughs> reputation. Oh, also so failed. Mine. Are you always this hot? Rejected. No. Uh, of course. This one. I can't believe it. Feel like heaven. I was the only one who picked it, but I ranked it pretty high. I um, almost Pick that almost almost doesn't count. Too. I know it's another one I almost picked. I almost had a pulse, <laughs> but I didn't. This is a top twenty list. <laughs> um, out of control, which surprisingly a couple no. of us picked. So um, I have just begun to fight, which was a you know mm-hmm. some some of these you're going to recognize yeah. from the uh, Gene Simmons vols and of having circulated for many years. Um, Promise the moon. Which is, of course, a, a revamping of an Elder demo. I like that. Heavy rain. I think that was Ken's. Ah. Uh, it was mine. Was it? No, oh, no. Okay, it was mine. Take me to the city. Which it was, was really. Nice that was I really picked, pushing I it. That one. Yeah, well, it, it got no. rejected. So nice pick. You wasted. <laughs> it got rejected. So. It got rejected. Um, and then two shockers. Deadly weapons. Rejected. Mm-hmm. And legends never die. 
Well, this one did, because ah. those were the Ooh, leastest nice. of the least. So we do end up with 12 <laughs> songs to talk about in our top 10 ranking, because um, what we start off with is a four-way tie, and I just wasn't going to tie break because, well, it's all Ken's fault, actually. Um, it is all Ken's fault. Yeah, being, the, being the, last, the last panelist to, to who provide his list left no time to do um, a tie break on these. So what we're going to do is talk about these these are our least favorites in this list and on seven points everybody knows i wait because ah. rain keeps falling on the time traveler so oh mm. really well yeah okay lonnie why don't you start us off Rain with some of those were any of those your picks uh yeah time, wait. you had I'll time wait traveler mine. yeah you had i wait was on mine. yeah that's two of them that are on mine actually. all right what so tell Everybody knows, That's and awesome. rain keeps falling down, no. down, down. No, yeah, I, had, I, had I had time traveler. Rain keeps falling. Uh, I had yeah. time traveler was my number ten. I like that. It really and, and everybody said this that has listened to it. It really sounds like it belongs on the soundtrack of some kind of '80s movie or something like that. Some kind of montage and some kind of '80s. Yeah, movie. really. It's awesome. Like that. That song belongs at, and it. It, it's a good song. It'd be really fitting in some kind of montage in a movie, like you know, oh, Back to the Future. I, mean, I know it doesn't. It doesn't fit into a Rocky, but you know, Rocky. Rocky always had like a montage in the middle when he's working out, and all of a sudden, like, oh yeah, my head's in the game now, and here comes this, you know, big montage of, of Rocky working out in the, in the, you know, in in, in Russia, you know, yeah. lifting weights the old fashioned way, you know, Rocky Four, right, the best. And so it really sounds like it belongs in a movie. I I, I really like the song. It, it, was, it was number 10 on my list, so it did make my cut. But I wait. I had it number four. I had it really high up there. I really like I wait. It might be it's not my favorite song off, off of The Vault, but it's pretty darn close. It's really, really good. I listened. I uh, made a playlist of these 10 songs and like listened to them over and over and over today while I was working. I wait is really good. So... Um, I did anybody I get I maybe is it on there because I ranked it so high or did anybody else have here have it on their list? It's only I, I did here. not have that one on my list. It's so only made... here because of you. Only wow, you. wow, wow. How about that? Yeah. yeah. Thanks a lot for skewing things. <laughs> yeah. And notice how none of these were rejects from revenge. Shock. There are no rejects from there are no, I mean, there's I want to touch you now, but yeah, it, but that's, it doesn't, heard doesn't really count. It's no. Got no, no vocals. Oh, right. No. Right. All right. Let's move on. Uh, Daniel, you picked uh, a couple of those in your list. Yeah. And actually, they're right next to each other. So why? Number four, I had everybody knows. I think that I'm baffled it didn't make the cut for a psycho circus. To me, it's better than all that's the Gene song. songs that ended up on the album. It's kind of a, have a haunting feeling. Uh, nice vocals from Gene. And I actually like, there are a few different versions of it, but I almost prefer the simple one with almost only an acoustic guitar. I think it's awesome. Absolutely top five for me. And time, uh, was it Time Traveler? Yeah, I'm a huge fan of the Rocky soundtracks. I, I mean, I love those kinds of songs. So everything that sounds you know, a bit 80s and you you want to work out to it. Uh, I always like those songs. And as Lonnie so well put it, it this is something that could have ended up on, on, on something like that. And uh, by the way, Rocky IV is a pretty cool movie as well. Russia versus America. He puts it out pretty blunt. But uh, and, you know, Dolph Lundgren is actually from Sweden. So it's a little yeah, bit of Sweden in, in, in ah, that movie. There you go. Yeah. He's an awesome guy. He's he's like his IQ is like 130, 100, something like that. He's really smart. You don't think that when you maybe watch the movies. Wait, isn't he but, a chemical uh, engineer or something? Yeah, I know exactly. he's got doctorates. He's, he's a chemical oh, wow. engineer as well. So, so uh, well, that was a bit uh, beside the point. But but time travel, of course, it 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 belongs in 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 a, in a list like this. Awesome song. Very 80s, of course, but if you like the 80s, it's pretty awesome. Um, Ken, yeah. do you have any of these in your list? Rain keeps falling. Rain keeps falling. Yeah. There we go. Mm. 
Well, um, that's that's why it made the list. <laughs> it was number four on my list. Ah, yeah, it keeps yeah, falling. skewed it too. <clears throat> yeah, I did it too. Um, <laughs> though you know, I just think that's good. I, there's a lot of versions of this, um, but I, I've just always let you know like the song and great melody on it um you know it's just a good one the the ones that daniel picked were on my list at one time i mean i had songs going in and out of my list and both of his were on my list so that's how close they Dang. were i guess if we had a top 20 we probably have a lot more matches but um yeah th those songs that you picked were very close to being on my Listen, tomorrow my list could change to something else. So there's so many demos out there, or you know, pretty good songs. Well, I didn't have any of these freaking songs on my list, so I'm I'm glad I don't have to. I, I'm not even gonna, you know, rise my heart and bash Time Traveler, which yeah. I despise. I I just wow. do not like that song. But, you know, you're insane. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Let's move moving on from my insanity into the next position, which would be number eight, and it's a reject, I guess, um, that ended up on Eric Carr's Rockology album, "The Eyes of Love," which uh -huh. I did have, and I, to be perfectly honest, I had the benefit of two of you had sent your list to me, and obviously I had seen them, and I saw that I was like, ooh. I, I'd forgotten about Forgot Rockology about from that context. So, you know, I, I went and looked at the track listing on there and, you know, some of the other stuff that does circulate that didn't make that album. Um, and it's a really good pick. You know, there's a lot of good Eric Carr stuff from the 80s that didn't make Kiss albums. And then you look at the Gene Simmons stuff that did. And it, it just boggles the mind that, you know, something like Eyes of Love could just be wasted so that it comes out decades later on rockology when so many in the kiss army have moved on and just don't care anymore so very cool to see that one picked um daniel you picked that one as well i'll i'll just have to second you i agree with what you said it was truly a good 80s song with um you know uh, you um, you instantly remember the chorus uh, very powerful vocals from from Eric. Uh, I think it was. Did he do this one for Crazy Nights or was it earlier? I'm not sure. If he did the demo for Crazy Nights, I think so. I'm not really sure, but but I think it, it was somewhere around there. And I mean, you just have to look at some of the songs on Crazy Nights and Hard in the Shade. If Paul or Gene had written this one, of course it would have made the album, but. Uh, it was again Eric feeling a bit left out, and uh, I'm sure uh, Paul understood it was a great song, maybe better than some of his "Bang Bang You," for example. <laughs> but uh, just just because it was Eric, it didn't make a cut. And then they gave him, you know, Little Caesar. Just yeah, was it the last song on Hot in the Shade? The worst spot to have it in as well. So ah, uh, it's a great song. I had it in number six. That number six. It was funny as I was listening to Bang Bang You today. Uh, uh, finally, why? Well, we're we're finally authoring the Belfast 1988 DVD. You know, it's been up okay. on YouTube in crappy quality, so putting it together properly, finally. Um, That's good. And when I went to check out the audio and the video mix on that, I, I checked out, obviously, Bang Bang You going into Eric Carr's drum solo into uh, Bruce's guitar solo and then com them coming back out into uh, No, No, No. So, uh, listen, checked all of that out today. So, all right, moving, uh, moving on to Lonnie. Eyes of Love, thoughts on that quickly, because you didn't pick What's it, that? did you? I did not pick it. Um, but it's a good song. I could see why you guys did. I actually forgot about, I guess it's, criminal that I, I forgot about the rock allergy I'm to, to look at it but um that's a that's an excellent pick and Daniel's right it, it is better than you know not only some of the gene stuff that ended up on these albums but the Paul stuff as well I um and I think it's actually another case of of kiss not taking the song submitted by the drummer seriously it's not the first time um that we've seen that in the history of the band and I, I just think I don't think it's anything personal against Eric Carr. Maybe it's per maybe something personal against the drummers that we don't really take the 
their submission seriously. So I, uh, it's a it's a great song. I I can see why why you guys put it on your list. I kind of forgot about it. Ken, did you take into consideration, uh, uh, you know, rockology or that side of things when you're doing your list? No, I, I kind of overlooked it, like, um, like Lonnie. Um, yeah, thinking about it now, I should, you know, I, sh- I should have picked that. <laughs> Probably put, put it on my list, um, but you know, I I overlooked it, and I think I was focused on the original four members more than than anything else when I was looking at the stuff. Um, yeah, the, I, it's it's better than a lot of songs during the eighties, and you know what? Some of the songs that other songs that Gene had were better than the songs that that ended up on the album. He has better songs off the album uh, albums, eighties albums, than were on eighties some of the eighties albums. So um, th- that that's another issue that I've I've mentioned before, and that's I think there's reasons for that. But anyway. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the same reason I think that Eric Carr didn't get anything on on the albums either. Um, so uh, yeah, it's a, I think it's a really good song, and I'm I'm kind of sorry I overlooked it. Yeah, so this is a really weird list because of the way that we've all approached it, and I don't doubt that people who are out there watching and listening are going, "What the hell?" You know. <laughs> You know, have an open mind with some of these songs, you know, could have been on Kiss albums. Some, you know, maybe we're stretching a little bit, but you know what? We're Kiss fans um, and we push the boundaries. The rules were made to be broken. Mm-hmm. All right. Wow. We've, got a, we, we've got another three way tie for the next bunch. And uh, these are all they only scored nine points in total. So, I mean, we're, we're, we're pretty low points wise uh, mm-hmm. for anyone who's watched our rankings previously. Um Chrome Heart is mm. only here because of Ken. Um, I love that song. Yeah, uh, Love is Blind and Suspicious, which probably has a lot of people shaking their heads with the WTF moments. And uh, actually, that's only there because of me. So, Ken, um, you're guilty. Well, yeah, Chrome Heart, is like, is like, I put it as number two on my list. Uh, I think it's just a great rocker by Gene, a really good rock song. Um, that should have been on an album, definitely. Uh, it's better than Heart of Chrome. Uh, <laughs> this is Chrome whoa, Heart. Whoa, whoa. It's, it's better than Heart yeah. of Chrome. Yeah, it is. I think it's, be- it's better. It has a better riff. Um, I'm trying to band hammer him, and it's just not working. No. So uh, people out there, go go listen to it um, on YouTube. You know, Search it up, Gene Simmons, Chrome Heart. And uh, yeah, you'll see how good this song is. It really is a good song. So, yeah. I, the reason is, is you know, I forgot about it, and I and I was, you know, searching through stuff, and and it came across. I thought, oh yeah, this is this is a great you know tune. Should have made an album, definitely. That's why I put it so high. Which is why I can't even think of its melody or any lyrics. Um, you haven't heard it enough. Yeah, clearly, clearly not. Cl- clearly not. Um, Daniel Erlani, any thoughts on Chrome Go Heart? Back and listen to it. I just think it's funny. I think it's funny that uh, no, no, none of these songs ended up on an album, but the titles did. You know, Paul just <laughs> stole the titles from Chrome. Or, or, he, he, he did Heart of Chrome himself, and then also the demo called uh, Gene had a lot of demos that were named like Rain or Heavy Rain, and suddenly Paul comes up with a song named Rain. Uh, but I didn't pick any of those songs that were mentioned, so let's hear what Lonnie has to say. I'm kind of in the same camp as uh, as Julian on the Chrome Heart, right? I can't I can't think of the melody or anything on it right now. Off the top of my head, I'll have to go back and get out the to it. I, I will take Ken's Good advice too. and go listen to it again. Um, but is Love Love is Blind? Is that the other one? Love is Blind and Suspicious. I picked Love is Blind. I did not pick Suspicious. Mm-hmm. Love is Blind is number eight on my list. Does anybody else have Love is Blind on their list? No, I do. It's a good tune. Uh, no, it usually does. I, like it. I have it on there. I think it's, I think it's, you know, it's it's a good gene song. Very, very Beatles-esque. I mean, I can see why it doesn't make a Kiss album that, you know, it, it doesn't, it wouldn't, I can't think of a Kiss album that it would really mold into very well but it's a great song very very you can really hear the, the beatles influence on that song and I, I think it's a great song 
Um, but again, I can see what I sign on like myself. Yeah, I, I will say this. These 12 songs that we've come up with uh, would make an absolutely horrible Kiss album if they were to take all of these and do a Van Halen thing and, you know, work on those backing tracks and keep vocals and replace this and replace. Terrible album. I mean, it'd be, it would probably be called Blender um, because yeah. it's just Blender without a lid on because it, it's like one of Gene's songs in the 80s, just all over the place. So, yeah, um, yeah I, I picked Suspicious. And from the moment I heard the sample of that, um, it didn't, I didn't remember that that ended up on um, Black and Blue album. But I figure since there's plenty of Kiss songs with Jamie St. James and Tommy Thayer co-writes that it's completely fair play, um, that Gene had a vocal demo that it was included on the vault. And I really dug it and it made me go back and listen to the whole black and blue back catalog and discover that there was some stuff on those albums that i do actually like and think has held up well so i had it as my second in second oh. place wow. Oh, wow that that's how much i like that song um mm. today when i was doing my listing because i'm happily able to say that tomorrow could be completely different and probably would be so um two of us had love is blind i love that song from the moment i got the first bootleg with it on again the beatlish nature of it and you know that that's my number five pick who else had love is blind lonnie you is all right yeah you too yeah it's so, a good song. yeah all right now it's a big separation in points as i think we get a, a couple more of us actually liking some of these songs and i'll go to the sheet where i've got how many of us picked each song um at the end okay so in fourth place now on 17 points so nearly double are you ready well Lonnie, no. are you ready i am i had it very high on my list i had it what two maybe i had it two two on my list i love that song that's better in my opinion, Are You Ready is better than anything on Monster and Sonic oh, yeah. Boom, for that matter. I I think it's yeah. you know one of the one of the best Kiss songs since I I don't know when because you can go back to Cycle Circus. I, I think it's better than anything on Cycle Circus to, except except maybe the title title track might be the only thing I can really compare it to as far as a Kiss song going back to 1998. I mean, I listen to that song a lot. It is really good. And there's some early, like, um, tweets from the band about Monster coming out. And, and Are You Ready is listed as, as, one, of the, as one of the songs. And mm. why it got left off, I, I think it's mind-boggling. Because and Paul Stanley was in control. There you go. That's the reason. And it was the same it was old story. Why were Chicago. some of those songs on the vault left off the '80s album, and the you ended up with songs. the shit sandwiches that Gene ended up with? There's a reason. I've Can you imagine you summer 2012 that that's the single that comes out instead of Hello Hallelujah? It would have been yeah. awesome. There's, there's been a fans. reason. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I think the buzz around Monster would have been so much more intense if that had been the lead single in the summer of 2012 leading up to its release talk about a miss opportunity i love that song and Kiss that's why i put it at number two nice production too on it yeah for yeah. yeah so it's because of lonnie and me i mean i had this uh, this is my number three pick on this list yeah. today uh and exactly for that and when we talk about kiss and we talk about what we like in kiss songs anthemic is often a word thrown about yeah, are you ready it's a declaration it's the sort of thing yeah. you expect paul stanley to be demanding of the audience not gene simmons so when again it was the lead off single from the vault it was like how the hell did this miss out on a kiss album and for exactly that reason because how dare gene simmons be coming up with a paul stanley audience rap of are you ready you know it's so much of what's been missing from KISS in, over the past two decades. That message, it's such a shame that Paul couldn't say, whoa, I, I, I didn't think of that. Well, maybe I'll sing it, you know, because it's a great song and it is a great thing to say to the audience other than say yeah or are you ready? Yep. Daniel, thoughts on are you ready? It was close on my list. I had it at 
number 11. So I also enjoy the song. I think it's uh, really a really well written rocker. And uh, but I wouldn't replace Hell or Hallelujah. I think that's even an even better so song. But it should have been on a Kiss album, that's for sure. Um, if you look at Gene Simmons' uh, songs on, on especially Monster, it, it's a mind blowing that it didn't make it. So it's a real good song. Number 11 on my list. It was close, but no cigar. Ken? Yes. The only, re <laughs> the only reason I, I you know it, it's a great song. The only reason I didn't pick it, it was because it was too, I, guess, I felt it was just too obvious. Yeah, it's too and, great. I know, and, and, and I thought, oh, and I thought I'd be called out on it because I didn't think anyone else was going to pick it. So I, I just said, no, uh, uh, there's a lot of other good songs. I, I'm going to come up with some other good stuff. So, but yeah, that that was borderline making my list, yeah, like same some other ones. So it's a good pick. Definitely a good pick. Yeah, so you're absolutely right, Ken. There's a ton of other good stuff to pick from for this list. Uh, so I hope people do remember that. So let me remind you, you want a free poster? Just email kissfaq at outlook.com um, and include your, e your email address. Don't send me your postal address, and I'll put you in the hat, and uh, maybe, you'll, maybe you'll win one, and I'll let you know. So Boston move it. Hit. The one I always wear. <laughs> the bootlegger hat. All right, moving on into uh, third place on 26 points, and I am shocked. I'm pretty disappointed, actually. Sword and Stone <sighs> only made it to third place, and Daniel, you and I both had it as our number one pick. Daniel, why? Really? really? Number one? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. Great minds, great minds think alike. Uh, it's uh, it's the best, the best song Kiss ever did that didn't end up on an album for me, mm. for sure. Yeah. Um, if you yeah. look at the time, if you look at the time period, this was just this was perfect. But if you're a Gene guy like Ken, you might say it's a bit too pop, you know, too much pop or something. Pret pretentious. But, as yeah, well. pretentious maybe. Yeah, yeah. that might be it. Uh, the the lyrics are eighties cheese, but I don't mind that. Oh yeah, uh, I don't mind that at all. Uh, but I, the best thing about this is something that's been lacking from the band for the past few decades, I guess. Uh, Paul Stanley vocals, top notch Paul Stanley vocals. I mean, the vocals on this song are is hitting it out of the park. You know, it's a home run for sure. Uh, one of his best performances in my mind and imagine what this could have done on the album with uh, you know putting some more t time into this song and uh, making it even better it ended up on some other album some other band covered it but on fire but, yeah but when paul isn't on on vocals it's it's just not the same it's not the same so i really enjoy that demo and uh uh, why did they pick again bang bang you over this one uh, this i'm sure it must have been the producer ron nevison again or oh, what do you think because otherwise if it had been any other album like animalize uh, asylum where paul were was in the driver's seat i'm sure it would have ended up on the album but um it did I was gonna say, what do you ron, say ron nevison was in paul's pocket I mean, they were like, I think, vacationing together Cahoots. in, I think, Vail, Colorado, Whistler. or something like that. Yeah. Or, whoa, okay. And uh, so, yeah. Or Aspen. Aspen. Is yes. it, was it Aspen? I don't know. Oh, Somewhere with snow. You might. It's, I think it is Aspen. I think it was Aspen. But anyway. Somewhere um, more. <laughs> it's just, yeah, I, I, could, I could see why, um, you know. This is I, you know, Paul's probably said, "Well, this, these are my best ones. Let's use these ones, you know." And the guy's like, "Okay, you know." So anyway, and then Gene, you know, gets you know, his his stuff, better stuff turned away. Suspicious. Instead of exactly yeah, things like that. Um, um, but anyway, we've talked about that before. I just want to mention that. Yeah, he had him. They were kind of hanging out together, 
uh, Paul and, R- and Ron Davidson. Yeah, so when I did the the, the Kiss of Hickey song story series, I did feature this song. And Foreigner said they, or was it Loverboy? Yeah, Loverboy, sorry. Um, so they wanted to record it. And then, um, mm. what's his name, the lead singer of... Um, Reno? Lou Mike Graham. Reno? Yeah, Mike oh, Lou Reno. Graham, that's Foreigner. Yeah, no, Mike Reno said he, Mike Reno. he, okay. he, couldn't, he couldn't sing it. So, oh, really? It, so, uh, that's a pretty good voice. Yeah. Paul Dean decided to record it for his solo album that he solo was working on. Album. And he did a whole bunch of stuff on his solo album that Reno had rejected um, for oh. Loverboy. And I don't know why I keep getting Foreigner and Loverboy mixed up, but I did the song stories. Yeah. So that's, uh, that's the excuse that Ron Nevison used, that it had kind of been promised to another high-profile mm-hmm. band, um, so they moved on to other material. Now, why would that have not been a problem the next year with Hide Your Heart when Bonnie Tyler, Molly <laughs> Hatch, and Chris Frehley, you know, it, it doesn't make any sense. And, and when you end up with stuff like Bang Bang You on an album, I mean, who the hell was thinking of that versus Are You Always His Heart, Dial L for Love, all the other stuff which is so clearly superior to a, a lot of the dross on, on that album. So... I picked it as well, and I don't know if I'd go as far as saying Great Minds, because that'll come back to haunt us a couple picks later when it's Ken and Lonnie's <laughs> turn. Okay. Um, but it is a really good anthem, and it, it's something that was missing, that it also is sincere. And I think, Daniel, you said it, that it, it's a great vocal take, but I don't think it's a better vocal than Every Time I Look at You or, you know, certainly some of the stuff on MTV Unplugged. I think Paul still had great vocals in him, you know, all the way up through the 90s, but it is a really good and strong song. Um, Lonnie, did you want to say anything on this one? No, I, you guys pretty well summed it up. I, I had Sword and, Sword and Stone 7 on my list, definitely made my list. Um, there's just some some tracks I like better than, than Sword and Stone, but I I agree with you guys. It, 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 it's ridiculous that it's not on Crazy Nights. Well, some of the garbage that is on Crazy Nights is is there. It's really mind mind boggling. I mean, first time I got, first time I heard this song was, it was late late '90s. I got a a CD called Deadly Demos, and there's a couple versions of it on there, and I was like blown away listening to that. I'm like, what is this? This is amazing. And I remember like playing it for my friends, like so like proud of it, and. And at the same time, almost embarrassed that this was the, you know, this, this demo was the only version of it that I had that it wasn't on a proper. So it was kind of a mixed emotions, you know, listening to it and playing it for me. Ken, yeah. you also had it on your list, so it did meet. Did. It, it did meet it Ken's number, list. It was yeah, it was number nine on my list, um, and it it almost didn't make it, but uh, yeah, I stuck it in there towards the end and stuck it in i think it's it's <laughs> it's towards the uh cheesy side as far as i'm concerned you know kind of the the lyrics and chorus part of it um that's why it kind of falls lower on there but otherwise it's yeah it's a real good song that should have ended up on the kiss album and there we go all right moving on now another another substantial jump up to 31 points and daniel made a good point about this actually because you said smoke and then you said slash don't you hesitate aren't they really the same song anyway and then yeah kind of so mm. i i did combine mm. those and ken you had both mm. of them on your list separately. I had both of them. so you know There's that's so why much I, like, I like I that's what that's why like we're that on 31 like points for like. Yeah, that's that's and Lonnie had smoke on his list, and I didn't have either of them on mine. So Ken, since you have two picks on your list, uh, why don't you talk about smoke and don't you hesitate? Yeah, I mean it has that uh, old time feel, rock and roll, very r- Rolling Stoneish uh, kind of riffing, um, which which uh, I like, um, and. Yeah, it's 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 it just doesn't make sense that it wasn't on something like Dress to Kill, to kill. you know that that era kind of uh, you know album. Um, it made it could have made Dress to Kill even you know better, you know than it you know was. So you know uh, yeah, they're similar. They are similar songs, 
I, I, I give you that. And I guess I, I do like that, you know, that rock groove, that old time rock and roll kind of groove. And that, I've always liked that kind of stuff. That's why I like stuff like Let Me Go, Rock and Roll, and, you know, what, whatever, and other stuff. So it's a cool, cool song or cool songs. And I think they're they're both good and yeah. probably the same song. <laughs> now, Don't You Hesitate, of course, was demoed for uh, for Destroyer, the album that became Destroyer. But I, I think it's too similar to some of the happy, clappy stuff yeah. on, you know, Dress to Kill. Dress to kill. You know, and a thing for my baby, don't you? They both have that mm-hmm. kind of, you know, yeah, boogie. They're, they're very 70s boogie songs. Boogie, yeah, boogie. Yeah, thinking of one of the recent threads on the FAQ. Um, yeah. So I, I can see there not being much that you can do with them. And Ezra and saying, well, you know, it's okay, but I just don't see where it goes. You know, it doesn't have any real prospects for development. And smoke certainly does. You know, it ain't the smoke. You know, yeah. what what a great... It's And, and it's a great you know, line. The, the call out, it's the fire. You know, <laughs> real, it's, that's fun. That's fun rock. So, yeah. uh, Daniel. Your thoughts, uh, since you had combined them both, really? Yeah, because if you listen to the guitars and the drums, it's basically the same song. But I have to agree with you guys. My first makeup album was Dress to Kill, and I love that one. And as Ken mentioned, it sounds like something off of Dress to Kill. But as you said, Julian, it's very similar to the other Paul songs. So to add another one like that, really makes no sense so i don't see it ending up on an album maybe on some sort of b-side or something but i really like especially smoke i think the uh the lyrics and the chorus are a bit better on that one but they're basically the same song but i had it uh at number three so it's really good uh, to my ears and to Lonnie's, because he had it as, as well he had smoke at number three as well yeah it's smoke at number three i really like you know, I really like I like Smoke better than Don't you Hesitate, even though they are basically the same song. But you know, I really like you know, it's kind of made a good comparison. It's like it reminds me of Let You Know, like just the the walking baseline type of of rhythm to it that you can really get into. Um, I really I really enjoyed the song when you know those demos came out years ago with with Smoke and Mistake on. It was like, oh my gosh, where 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 was this stuff at? Yeah. Um, I mean, and I can see. I can see why Ezrin would would leave would leave it off Destroyer. It's not a direction. It doesn't fit with the direction he was molding for that album. Smoke Smoke would be an odd placement on that album unless Bob really did some molding and recreating of that song. It would it would really feel like the eyeball on that album. So I can see why it's not there. But you know maybe maybe a couple albums later go back and. And, and revisit some of these. Hey, maybe that wasn't such a a bad idea. Maybe we could still turn this into something, you know, and and you know, something useful. So, I I really like it. Um, I think it's a great song. Yeah, but well, don't you hesitate? There's something lazy about it to me. Like it's a throwaway. Paul Stanley. I, I can just see Paul Stanley sits down. I'm going to write a song. Five minutes later, here you go. It's like you know, last minute homework, and you know, it's like Paul Stanley phoning it in. Ken, did I get yeah, you on these? Yeah, but, yeah, but I, yeah. I just have to say that some of Paul's best songs has actually been they have been written in five minutes. Uh, it, that was the way he worked in the early days. So, but I see what you mean. Uh, it's very similar to a lot of the other songs. Uh, what did you say, Ken? He said he had already spoken about it. Okay. And that I was losing track of everything as usual. So uh, that means our number one song is No Surprise What So Frickin' Ever, which is almost a shame. And I'm going to go first because I ranked this the lowest of us all. And it was my number four pick. Um, Simply because I think I'm oversaturated with it. Mm -hmm. It's my life uh, on, on, what, 35 points. You know... It's kind of been that song that we've always searched out better, marginally better sound quality versions of the 1982 one. That 1998 abomination is just a waste of air. Um, The real one, back when it was, you know, legit, 
is mm -hmm. just a fantastic anthem and we've said it we've sung its praises how many times on this show and you know it just is a really really good song born in the elder realized in creatures and then th given to wendy o williams <laughs> <laughs> and black and blue did a version of it as well which mm. is halfway decent so it made my list. It didn't get to the top of it just because, you know, stuff like Suspicious is a little bit newer and fresher and still kind of interesting. Daniel, you had this uh, not at the top either. You know, this was your number three pick. Um, yeah, but as you said, we've, we've spoken about this song over and over again, so I don't know if there's a lot to add to it. But, you know, great chorus. Uh, uh, great um, lyrics as well. It's uh, it could have been a hit uh, in, in the I guess early eighties, but um, for creatures it really doesn't fit that album. So what do you do with it? And then you you get Vinnie Vincent and all his uh, creations and lick it up. Then you maybe don't need it as well. Uh, and then it gets uh, you know almost forgotten about and they put it in uh, the vault again. Uh, but uh, an awesome song, um, but as you said, Julian, I've heard it so many times at this point, so I'm a bit tired of it, but I still see the greatness in it. So it's too bad people didn't get to hear it. That's uh, my take on it, you know. I think this could have created some, some buzz and, and people would have heard it, people who weren't in, into Kiss, and said, well, this is a great song, who did this one? And oh, Kiss, and they might have become fans. So. Great song. Yeah, I, I do see how it can uh, end up at number one. Yeah, so what you do on Lick It Up is you shit can on the eighth day. Yeah. <laughs> and you put It's My Life on. <laughs> yeah, you know, or Not For The Innocent, for that matter. Maybe. Or yeah. Dance no, Over Your Face. No, no, no. Uh, no. Maybe you can put it at the end. Sorry, I'm pushing instead can towards of, the break of, there. Yeah. Instead of, yeah, I like On The Eighth Day. Uh, All right. Well, Daniel well, said it before. Great minds think alike. So both Ken and Lonnie have "It's My Life" as their number one picks. Lonnie, tell us why. It is. It's 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 the it's the best song that's not on a Kiss album. And I think a lot of Kiss a lot of Kiss fans will agree with that. It's it's the best song that they recorded that never ended up on a on a Kiss album proper. I mean, I can see. I mean. I can see it not being on Creatures, but I, I think Lick It Up is where it really would have belonged. Not that there's anything wrong with Lick It Up, but I could, I, I think taking the makeup off and having an anthem of It's My Life would have, could have really propelled them even further as like the second single off of, off of Lick It Up. Or maybe even the first single off of Lick It Up, like It's My Life and they're, you know, out of the makeup. Here, here I am. Um, here we are. It could have been, you know, a, a really a Kickstarter for their for their non makeup '80s career. It's, you know, and, and I can, and it's so good. You know, that that's why they revisited it on on Psycho Circus. You know, maybe it's because of lack of good materials. Why they had to revisit it on on Psycho Circus and thought about including it. Um, and I know Julian's not a big fan of of that version of it, and it has its flaws. But I I I still wish it would have ended up on Psycho Circus. You know, drawing a line, okay, it didn't end up on, on Look Out for Creatures. Fine. Well, put it on Psycho Circus at that point in time because the material that you had at that point was not was not that great. And put that on there, that had potential for something at least, I think, at that point in their career. That it it, it would have been a song that maybe a lot of a lot of KISS fans may may not have still heard at that point or or could have brought in some newer fans, like, oh that's because it's very radio friendly, I, I think it could have done well for him again in '98. So, you know, it had it had multiple opportunities that lined up on Kiss albums, and for some reason, never did. For I guess for reasons smarter than I can understand. Paul. Well, yeah, yeah. again, again, <laughs> yeah. I, 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 it's there's, true. There's a running, there's a running. <clears throat> yeah, and I actually love the point that you make 
that it would have been a great declaration of where Kiss was at in September 1983 when they took off the makeup and exactly what you just said about them making a declaration. Yeah, I've never thought of it in those terms of what those lyrics could have meant to the band taking off its makeup. So I think that's a really, you know, awesome point to have made. Ken, it's also your number one pick. And great apart day. from saying Gene Simmons' name, why? No, it's just a great anthem. Um, and I, I, you know, I, I hope there is a fully produced uh, version of it that was recorded for Creatures. I hope there is. I hope there is one because I would love to hear it in that form. Uh, that would have been perfect. I do agree with Lonnie that they could have, you know, put it on, look it up. It would have fit in there, no problem. Um, and yeah, where it's it's my life, they could have called it, you know, it's our life, or or you know, and like Lonnie said, here we are. You could they could have changed it's my life to here we are, or whatever, um, as a declaration. You know, you know change the lyrics up a little bit. Um, but yeah, it should have been. It should have been on uh, definitely on creatures even from the beginning. I don't know why they just could have left it off. I mean, it doesn't fit so much, I, so I understand that. So look it up. Yes, um, from what I heard is Gene Simmons. I sorry, I said Gene Simmons, but he he kept bringing it back every album. You know, uh, look at uh, Animal Eyes. He kept bringing it back. I think he brought it back for uh, like even Crazy Nights. Uh, I believe yeah, I read, or I mean, I probably read out of Julian's book, but anyway. Um, and that's and, probably wrong. <laughs> <laughs> and, so, so he kept bringing it back because he knew how good of a song it was. And Paul, I think Paul, it, this is how, why I think with Paul's songs, if his song, because he, you know, wrote the song, um, if if it's got rejected off an album. He just leaves it. He doesn't ever bring it back. He just leaves it. He's like, it's rejected. I've been rejected. That's a reject. I'm not going to co go back to it ever. Where Gene, he goes, he'll get a whole bunch of rejected, and he'll keep wor working at it, retooling it, trying to get it, you know, get him perfected and try to get him on an album. So that's the difference between the two there. Um, but, yeah, it's number one for me. It should have been... Yeah. You know, I've heard it so many times now. I was <laughs> sick of it, but I I know it's such a great song, and, and it needed to be on a Kiss album. So Paul's so. on the songwriting credit, and um, so that means that going back to the Elder when it was born, that Paul was probably involved in it musically rather than lyrically. So maybe yes. he hates the song so much because Gene took that idea and turned it into something awesome. It's. <laughs> anything's possible yeah so let's run down the list um from least to most favorite everybody knows i wait rain keeps falling time traveler eyes of love chrome heart love is blind suspicious are you ready sword and stone smoke slash don't you hesitate and it's my life now let me give you some of the breakout on how these votes went down it's my life and sword and stone had unanimous consent we all agreed on those only two songs had three people voting for them i want to rule the world and smoke and i want to rule the world didn't make the list because it just wasn't high enough uh high up enough on everyone's uh -huh. list um the songs that two of us agreed on were are you ready eyes of love love is blind out of control and daniel i think yeah and time traveler and then the rest of them only had a single vote each, and it was just all dependent on where they ranked in our lists for them. So that's some pretty weird shit, to be perfectly honest. Um, yeah. But that's the whole idea of doing this conversation and framing it that way. Um, I don't think there's any shocks that It's My Life wins, and the rest is just completely up for grab. No one's going to be shocked that Sword and Stone are there. All of them are probably scratching their heads saying, well, you guys are playing by some pretty interesting rules by including Rockology, the vault and you know and, and that but you know so what it's our show we get to f do whatever the hell we want um i i do want to get your guys thoughts on a couple of topics on 
the FAQ this week. And obviously we've got the postponement of the South American leg of the tour until next year, the postponement of the Australian leg of the tour until next year, Charlie Watts being unable to tour with the Rolling Stones. And, you know, the Foo Fighters have successfully you know, hit the road again for their tour. Uh, ZZ Top's continuing their tour without Dusty and just his hat on a mic stand with El, what's his name, Elwood filling in on bass. I mean, just what what are your impressions now for wherever you are in the world and what's going on in COVID in your neighborhood and what's going on socially for the prospect of touring? Because rehearsals are starting for KISS. And they're yeah. going full steam ahead. Ken and I have tickets. Um, Daniel, Sweden, I mean, what's your take on touring and, and the state of kind of the pandemic world that we're still a part of? Well, personally, I'd say I'd never go to a concert now. I've gotten one shot so far uh, of vaccine. If I had had the second shot as well, maybe I would think about it, but I'm kind of not taking any chances and i don't see touring starting just yet um, but as we see around the world just as they start letting up on on you know uh, the rules and people get out it starts all over again so i'm, I'm not sure what will happen and on the other the other thing you mentioned with the uh, cc top continuing with just a hat on a mic stand well that was what he wanted he said, carry on, continue the show and keep on playing for the fans. So then I think it's the right decision. Uh, and if you think back uh, of uh, our band, Kiss, when they uh, put the makeup on Ace and Peter, at first, uh, on Tommy and Eric, at, fir- at first it feels really strange and hard to accept. But when you think about it, would you like to have that or nothing at all? Uh, then I think it's a pretty easy choice. I'd rather see CC Top as they are now than don't see CC Top. Mm-hmm. Same goes for Rolling Stones. I mean, to be really honest, how many go to to uh, to a Rolling Stones concert to see Charlie Watts? <laughs> I don't know. Not, not not too many, I think. So, uh, so I think from what I've heard, he's he's ill or something maybe he can join a bit later on the tour but starting to postpone the whole tour i I don't see that happening you know so uh, i think i think it's okay that they continue playing yeah you know charlie watts had emergency surgery so you know it was a very much a last minute thing the guy's 80 years old keith and mick are 77 lonnie what's what's your take st louis how how's that part of the world doing in terms of confidence i know it was an early you know kind of opener uh in some areas of your state would you be confident going to a show are you looking forward to any no missouri has its set of problems as you've probably seen on the news um we we are we are we are high up there in, in COVID numbers right now. Um, a lot of people in our state don't want to take the vaccine, and, um, mm-hmm. for you know what whatever reason. So we are we are we are um, high up there in numbers right now. Um, however, I do have tickets to go see Guns N' Roses in Indianapolis in about mm, about a month from right now. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm, I'm excited about it. You know, I haven't seen a concert in a year and a half. And I mean, I know Ken, you and, and Julian have tickets to a Kiss show. So, I mean, I'm excited about going, you know, it's going to be, and I've been to a Cardinal game with 35,000 people in the, in the stands, you know, a couple weeks ago. And it was a little weird, you know, to be honest with you, because the last time I saw a sporting event was like pandemic and like, like, like seats around me are zip tied off and like no one can sit within you know, six or eight feet from us. And that was strange too. But at the same time, it was strange sitting down. Like there's people right on top of me breathing into the back of my neck during this game and like yelling behind me. And it's like, it's weird. It was a little, it was a little strange and a little unnerving for a little while, you know, like it was a certain point where like it, it, the game wasn't very good. And I looked at her and I was like, all right, let's get the hell out of here. <laughs> so we, we left. Well, you know, so, hey, the European Championship in soccer was held in in uh, Russia a few months ago, uh, and 
Finland, you know, <clears throat> they are neighboring countries. And the capital of Finland is? Helsinki. Yeah, very, very good. And uh, uh, so, <laughs> but uh, uh, some, like 3,000 Finnish people went over and, and watched the, mm. the, the European Championships. And Finland really had no COVID, COVID uh, at all, almost. It was open. But then when the fans came back and they were going to check them, they had like two personnel who checked at the border. It, it didn't work. So they checked a few hundred and they just let the rest go into the country. And now it has spread COVID. So people are hating on these soccer fans. Uh, and they started the COVID thing all over again. So so I'm not sure. I'm staying away from, from uh, big crowds. Yeah, I, I'm, I went back to work, and I'm now taking public transport. Oh, Jesus Christ. Um, yeah, and someone sat down next to me on the bus. I was like, <gasps> you know, after, you know, social distancing for 18 months, get away, two seats away. But you don't have to now. So it's like it's a really weird feeling. And also getting these places opening back up. I mean, Guns N' Roses, you see how they, they've got a new song in the set, right? Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, absurd. Really strange one. Well, well, it's based off an old uh, demo Silkworms from Chinese. Yeah, Silkworms from Chinese. From the he sang it's so strange. Uh, yeah, I did he, he was doing some very some weird vocals. vocal stuff, and yeah. they had they had some canned vocals yeah. uh, for okay. him as well. Some triggered stuff. Mm -hmm. it, it, yeah. Very weird. But I'm interested I'll, to see if it's in the set again tonight. They play yeah. at Life Stadium tonight. So okay. I, I I got an email from uh, Rockstar University up in uh, Santa Rosa, and you know what the next band. The, now that they're open is it's uh beer drinkers and hell razors the zz top cover band that i was i've talked about previously yeah. mm -hmm. uh being a fan I, I i'm really tempted but then again so is a uh, faster pussycat on new year's eve but uh um yeah I'm, I'm okay i've got the i've got the tickets i've got the shots um i'm still going to you know obviously i don't like the idea of crowds because you just don't know um and we just don't know what this damn delta or the next few letters of the greek alphabet are gonna do I, I don't think we're safe, but I do think we need to get on with life because I don't think um, we can survive shut down mu much longer just um, in terms of mentally, let alone financially. So it's a really weird situation to be in. And I know every state's its own kind of Petri dish. Um, every city is its own as well because every every place has different adoption rates for you know, vaccines and whatnot. It'd just be nice if we could all get on the same page and just, you know, wipe it out as much as we can with the tools that we have. Ken, we're, you know, we'll be in yeah. a crowd and we're both doing the meeting the between plexiglass. Uh, at least you, class. Know the, you, you being on an aisle seat and me, there, you know, next to you, you'll, you know, I'll, get I'll, away, I'll socially distant. I'm kind of curious on, on uh, how the venue and how actually KISS is going to handle stuff uh kiss regarding the like a meet and greet the meet and greet um how they will handle that um it'd be interesting they haven't said anything regarding you know the, well you, you need to be vac you know vaccinated to do the meet and greet or anything like that i haven't heard anything um but i know the venues a lot of the venues now are saying yeah you either have to be vaccinated or have a you know a, a test within the last like uh, seventy last seventy two hours stuff like that. A lot of venues are doing like that that sort of thing. Um, I, you know, I, I've been vaccinated, so I'm okay. Um, but you know, yeah, I'm sure we'll be bringing our masks and and and, and whatnot. Um, the other thing is, I was thinking is, you know, what the hell did they do in the old days? I mean, the, there was a lot of diseases in the earlier, you know, to you know. Was it 1918 Spanish flu, or 19, 19, yeah, Spanish 19. flu, polio, all these things, measles. Uh, what did they do? Did they just hide in their their houses? They didn't wear masks. They did wear uh, masks during the Spanish influenza. They, was they it most the Spanish they, 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 they okay. most certainly did, and they also uh, ticketed people for not wearing masks. Oh, really? In America. Okay. I didn't uh, even know they ticketed them. No, no, it that's, it, that's it, good. it was, okay. and and there were groups of people who would shame people for not being masked, you know, and chase uh, them, chase them off the roads. I mean, you can't do that nowadays. Can't They'll do pull that. A lock now. on you. Yeah. Good, good, yeah. good luck. But yeah, I agree with you, Julian. That you know, uh, yeah, hopefully you know everyone or most get vaccinated, and yeah, we can 
start putting this thing, you know, behind us, uh, hopefully, uh, and you know, try to get back to normal. Yeah. Normal's good after all, you know. All it right. Is. You know, I miss normal. Yeah, I miss normal as well. All right, that's it. That's our ranking. That's one of the topics off off the board. Obviously, you've got everyone's got their opinions. Everyone, just do what's right for you. Um, you know, easy as that. So hopefully, we can get back to normal. To everyone who's going to Nashville this weekend for the Rock and Pod, wish I was there. Um, you know, have a great time. You know, um, that play that event is following Tennessee's you know guidelines for the event, and each one of the artists there will be doing their own thing in terms of what they want and feel comfortable with in social distancing for meeting fans. But you know, I'm sure you're still going to have a really good time because a lot of work has gone into that. So, um, you know, I'd like to thank the guys at Unholy Radio for having me on and letting me do a takeover this week. Um, real fun just to play 10 tracks that came to mind. Actually, there were 11. Uh, snuck one in at the end there. So I hope to do that again. It was real fun. So for now, from Ken, from Lonnie, Daniel, and myself, thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time. Thank you for spending time listening to the KISS FAQ podcast today. All sales are final. There are no refunds. If you'd like, look us up on Facebook or come over to the KISS FAQ message board and discuss the topic we've broadcast today. Don't forget to rate us on iTunes, Spreaker, or wherever you've listened to the show. We hope you'll join us again.